Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Today, we delve into a significant transformation within the municipal landscape of Saskatchewan, stemming from the recent Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association Convention held in Regina, Saskatchewan, earlier in April. Now, in a momentous decision, delegates representing municipalities across the province cast their votes, revealing an overwhelming 83.7% majority in favor of restructuring the governance framework of the municipal organization. Now, this pivotal moment not only marks a shift in direction, but also heralds a new era of efficiency and effectiveness in municipal governance in the province. To shed light on the intricacies of these proposed changes, and their implications for the organization, we have the privilege to be joined by SUMA President Randy Golden. With her expertise and insights, we aim to unravel the motivations behind this historic decision and explore how these transformative measures are poised to fortify and invigorate the organization. So stay tuned as we embark on a journey to understand the evolving landscape of municipal governance in Saskatchewan and the promising future it holds for communities across the province. This is Municipal Affairs. President Golden, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Um, we are just uh, almost a week and a half, almost two weeks from the SUMA convention when this episode will be airing. Uh, one of the big key takeaways from the SUMA convention was the governance review. So you were talking about this in 2023 when I first uh, uh, attended the SUMA convention in Saskatoon, but it was presented in front of delegates at this year's convention, AGM in Regina, and overwhelmingly, 83.7% said, yes, let's go for it with the uh, uh, governance restructuring. What was this restructuring all about? Can you just give me a brief background of how we got to where we got to in April 2024? Well, you know, Chris, I will try to be brief. But uh, <laughs> first of all, I think in my opening comments at the AGM, it uh, started out with, I am excited to be here for the AGM. And I don't know how many times people say they're excited to start an AGM, but we certainly will. And it really um, it really was exciting because uh, it, it came to, you know, a vote of something we've been talking with our members uh, for the past two and a half years. This uh, debate and this these uh, proposals uh, started in earnest two and a half years ago. And, uh, you know, when this term of our board came into being, we always sit down and do a strategic plan. And like strategic plans before us, we talked about governance because, you know, SUMA has been here for, you know, 100, 100 years. Our anniversary, Chris, next year, 100 years in 2025 as an association. So pretty exciting. Lots of exciting things that we've been building up to. So in talking with all our members, um, you know, they just wanted to build on the engagement that they had with the SUMA board and the work that SUMA did. So when we went back and took a look, how are we going to do that? What does that look like? Because, you know, we have 443 members, you know, villages, resort villages, towns, cities, northern municipalities, populations, you know, going from 20 to, um, you know, 250,000 soon. So, how do we do that? How do we build on the engagement and, and work on advocacy for our, our communities across this province? So what you saw at the HEM was two and a half years of work, discussions, thoughts, 25 different meetings that we held with the members, uh, and it was pretty exciting, and it's even going to be more exciting as we put it all into, uh, into uh, action. So I want to sort of get the big key takeaway, because uh, while we're going to dive into a few things that are going on and the changes that are going to be coming about, one of the big key takeaway is the structuring of the board of directors, from what I understand. Uh, it's moving from a board into sort of more delegates that are going to elect a president at the delegates who are going to then elect from the sort of representatives of the board can you just explain to me how the new board of directors will operate because there might be other municipal organizations who are going what's Saskatchewan doing maybe we should transpose what they're doing there into our organization well what we did at the very beginning is we got the um, board to understand and to let us know collectively where do we go 
Uh, are we looking at minute little changes or are we looking at changes um, that will totally, um, I guess, re-energize and reflect the needs of our members? And that's what the board decided to do. Um, so off we go. We brought in a consultant um, who did an environmental scan right across Canada over what are the best and the highest performing uh, not-for-profit um, associations and how do they operate? Um, and especially one that is has 443 mm -hmm. members as diverse as we do. So what came back to us was a caucus model. So although you, you know, we went from a, we will be going from an 18 person board to a seven person board. What we have is now 34 people involved through the caucus model. So um, every region uh, and every sector, like the villages, the towns and the cities will elect a caucus and the northern municipalities of of uh, seven, seven people, some six, the cities will have 16. So from that comes the board person, they will elect a chairperson who comes to the board. So there we have, um, that's how the board is composed. The president, um, and I think you saw, um, very much the support was for remaining the same elected all the members will have um, will have their vote on who their president is. So what I took away from that AGM is this is how the members want SUMA to operate for the next, well, let's not go 100 years, because built into this, Chris, is a review that has to happen in three years' time. So that review will happen before the next municipal election. Um, after uh, in in 2029. So how will this new smaller board be more efficient and more effective in governing and advocating towards the provincial government? Because uh, more voices is always great, but you're saying let's condense that and let's make uh, our voices stronger by having a diverse group, but smaller diverse group. So that way we advocate on specific issues rather than a large group of people to, to advocate on diverse issues. How is a smaller board better for the organization? I think it's much more nimble. Um, and because you can, you can imagine a hundred years ago when our members got together, um, they didn't come together as we do now. Uh, there are, that was the one time that they could communicate now um, we get members contacting us every day about things that they're seeing in their municipality, things that they need. So that caucus model for the villages, the villages themselves will get together um, and decide where they need to place their advocacy. There will be an overall framework of where we're going to go with advocacy. Um, and, um, you know, we will bring together those, the board of directors to put all the final decisions around that. The board of directors will have the responsibility to advocate for province-wide uh, initiatives. For instance, the revenue sharing that affects everyone basically the same way. So that's what the board of directors will do for advocacy. They'll oversee the administration of the organization, um, you know, the finances, the CEO, all of those kind of things. But the caucuses, the villages, the cities, the north, the towns will decide what are important to them to advocate for. And I just relate back to something we did several years ago, and that was the advocacy around the, the dates of the next municipal election. The province advanced their date, and they are now um, the date that uh, municipalities uh, use, which is toward, in October. And they moved the municipal election to November uh, the 13th. Well, we all know what can happen in Saskatchewan. It can be beautiful, but it also can be really nasty out. I'm hearing from members, uh, there's a two-week difference. When did they start campaigning? So not to confuse their residents over, you know, who's voting for who. So we did a, a provincial advocacy on moving the election date. And quite frankly, Chris, we didn't have agreement from all of our members. Villages, um, you know, uh, they vote, uh, resort villages vote in July or August already. Um, our towns wanted to have an election in September before harvest. Cities wanted to go in the spring. 
So uh, the meetings that we had with our minister, he just said, well, you can't make up your minds. So let's, we're just keeping it at November the 13th. So that's where we are. So if we can have more voices into that advocacy um, and, you know, let's, let's talk about um, RCMP, policing, public safety, uh, the voices that those villages can bring uh, to talk about what they need in policing, it's probably just a little different than what cities need for policing. So we will have all those voices being able to feed in and to speak to the municipal um, issues that they face every day. You talk about the different caucuses that are going to be involved in this new structure organization. Um, is it by region? Is it by population size? Is the sort of caucus going to be based on basically if you're you're a town, a village, a northern village? Just give me an example of how the diverse caucuses are going to be, or is it going to be by region caucuses? So the uh, election will happen at the convention. But one thing we heard, um, you know, loudly is um, our members like the regional meetings. They take place right now. They take place in the fall where members from a region, and I'll use the one I'm in and was the director for for many years, East Central. So we bring together members from East Central. So they may be from a village. They may, they're from the resort villages. They're from the towns. We have two cities from the cities. They all get together and discuss things that are happening regionally. But now what will happen is the villages in that region will get together um, at the Summa Convention and they'll elect their village uh, representative to the caucus. So that's when the caucus people will be elected. Okay. And so they will get together and choose their chair, Chris. So the then the villages, and resort villages combined will choose a chair who will represent them on the board of directors. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, so I was I was at the convention and I was listening into some of the the, uh, the the conversation that was going around this. Now this wasn't passed unanimously, as I talked about at the at the top of the interview. It was passed by eighty three point seven percent. You 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 were moderating. You were there. You were listening as well as I was in the I was in the back of the room. You were at the front the front center of the room. Um, <laughs> The concerns that were raised, were they surprising to you in any way? Because they were diverse about potentially losing the voices of these smaller uh, urban rural communities. And I say urban rural because there are a lot of or, villages that are about 50 to about 100 people in the province of Saskatchewan. Were you surprised at some of the feedback that you were hearing about some of the issues that people may have with this restructuring that Zoom is going to go through? Um, not surprised, Chris, because um, every one of those 25 meetings that happened across the province, I attended. I yeah. attended every meeting, and perhaps sometimes some of the members didn't attend all of those meetings. So in attending them, I've heard many of the comments, but overwhelmingly what we heard is, um, you know, it, in their opinion, after everything was explained, that they felt their voices would be heard or they would be heard more. Um, and uh, one of the things that I, I heard, um, quite frankly, in some, some of the regional meetings that I went to, people would stand up and say, let's just get it done. We've discussed this, you've described it, let's just get it done. And I said, thank you for that, but this is the process we will be following because we wanna make sure we hear from all those voices. So, you know, some of the voices that were, um, that that stood up, um, you know, had some concerns about, will this really happen? Will we hear more voices? And so I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's something that SUMA has to take into uh, account all the time that we continue these processes. So um, if you're from a village of 20, or if you're from the city of Saskatoon, many of our needs are the same, Chris, they're all, you know, we all, face challenges from our from our uh, residents. We all face challenges around finances, um, you know, and how do we provide uh, the water, the wastewater, the drainage, uh, the quality of life things like pools and, and arenas and walking paths. 
with the limited finances that we do have. So I, in my heart, and that's what I feel, that this is going to be a real advantage to our members. And will we hear some of them that are concerned? Absolutely. And it's our role to make sure that we're hearing all those voices. So before I turn to about what the next steps are now, now that it's been passed, I assume is going to be, uh, I'm assuming trying to implement it and seeing what the path forward is. I have one uh, simple question before we move on. What's the one thing that you're proud of about over the last two years? Because this has been a work in progress. And every time that you and I have chatted, we, I, I've, we've talked off the record by saying, how's it going? And it seems like it, it was, it's been sort of a long trail, but we are finally at the end destination. Looking back, what's the key takeaway that you're taking away from yourself as president of SUMO around what's transpired over the last two years? You know, Chris, that's an excellent question. And what's my takeaway? Um, the takeaway is from that we set forward to um, get the voices of of the uh, of our members. What do they want? Um, and we gave options. We put options out to start the conversations. And quite frankly, um, the first option that we put out around this was a ten to twelve person board. Uh, the first round of discussions at the regional meetings. Uh, fall of, of uh, 2022. And we heard, well, isn't that still too much? And there's still too many. Uh, so, you know, we then we provided another option. So my takeaway, Chris, is that this was an opportunity for our members to let us know where they want to go. This is not something that Randy Golden, president and, and uh, the board of directors dreamed up. This is directly what members asked us to do. My takeaway is this is a start of having our members participate and, and hear those voices and give us those voices. And um, last, uh, last Friday, you know, I, I got home from the SUMA convention Wednesday night um, and spoke with a member from um, quite a ways away who said, oh, you know, Randy, we do, we do work in Yorkton. I'm on the road in Yorkton. And I said, stop in. Here's my office. Stop in and visit with me. Well, Chris, Friday morning, he was in Yorkton and we sat down for an hour of conversation. And that's what it's all about. And that's what we actually ask our, our provincial representatives, our MLAs to do with us too. Just sit down and talk things over, you know, um, you know, have a coffee and talk things over. That's what really grow, you know, grew our province over all these years. And, and I'm hoping that we're going to continue that. So I want to talk about what the next steps are, because this this governance review does not end the moment the vote is cast. Now the implementation of the changes have to start taking underway. Yourself, along with your executive director, John Mark, are, I'm assuming are in constant conversation about what the next steps are from a administration side, but also as a board of directors side. But what's the first step from you as president that you need to start doing to ensure that this governance review just doesn't sit on a table and it doesn't actually get implemented. Well, what you saw to Chris at our annual meeting, um, we had our parliamentarians that we'd been working with because uh, the changes had to go into our bylaws and they had to be correct and they had to be legal. So we have that now. Uh, we have those three motions that are incorporated and the work begins. So there's some of the technical work that has to do now to uh, that third motion was to go in and make that uh, those bylaws punctual, uh, correct, and, and the wording is right. All those kind of logistics are taking place. But we also, and we've had um, drafts of a lot of this that we presented. So whether that was around, um, you know, when, when we take a look at how we implement those bylaws, we need terms of references for all of the caucuses. We need terms of reference for our board of directors. We need all of those things have to be put together because as of April 16th, 2025, they take effect. That board will now take effect. Uh, the, we're still operating as we did uh, to make sure that the processes all go in. Uh, there's so many different things. Uh, term limits were also passed. Uh, for the board of directors and the caucus model. All of those things now have to be formally uh, put into place so that uh, so that we have a legitimate uh, operation operating model. 
it's a busy year that Suma has ahead for themselves then because you don't just have this, the, the governance structure changes. You have a provincial election, which you'll be advocating uh, on issues for. You have your own municipal elections. Uh, have you bitten off more than you can chew or do you think Suma has gotten it right by doing this in a crazy 2024, 2025 year? Well, Chris, some of those things you've talked about are in, in process now. Right. Yeah. So, yes, we have an election. We have two elections. And um, who knows, we may have a federal election. That's we know <laughs> that that's coming up, too. So um, our administration and and I cannot say enough about the administration that we have under the leadership of Jean-Marc Nadeau as our CEO, uh, because even when we were at convention uh, with everything going on there, a complex comp um, convention that had so many moving parts um, so many panels, so many ways for our delegates to um, to get together. But there's professional development. There's meetings with our with our um, provincial leaders. So they are working hard. So all of that was going on. And behind the scenes, Chris, we uh, we made three announcements. Uh, one being the phase seven of broadband expansion which is so critical to our members. One is a uh, partnership with EcoWest that is going to allow us to move forward with a climate, uh, uh, climate change action center. And the third we're very proud of is some working agreements with our French municipalities and an association that we're going to be working with. So all of that was going on. Plus, we were receiving work from provincial government and, um, you know, requests for quote for quotes into different things. All of that's going on. So do I have confidence? Yes, I do. Um, a lot of work. We have a board of directors. Uh, we have an administration that's ready to take that on. And we are also, um, I would say to you, very active in, with the Federation Canadian Municipalities, the work that's going to be done on the uh, the physical framework and um, as I mentioned, we can't continue with a model of, uh, of property tax systems and models that were brought forward when Queen Victoria was still here. That's a while ago. <laughs> so things are, are looking to um, change. And uh, I can say that SUMA is very eager to work with our members to see that happen. Okay, you you mentioned the the elephant in the room, so I'm going to have to ask you the the follow up question to that statement there. Uh, during the convention, I posed a question to the Premier Scott Mo about yes. that that call for that trilateral agree uh, sit down between the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, the provinces, the territories, and the uh, federal government. He said more conversation is always uh, welcomed. Uh, I, I kind of chatted with you afterwards, but I never got anything on record. Are you happy that Premier Mo has taken the first step because he's now the first Premier on record from my my investigation to say he would be up for that conversation that FCM has been calling for? You must be happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Um, and I thanked him uh, for that, too. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, so excited that he's willing to take that step with our municipalities, uh, continue those conversations. We know there's going to be a lot of conversation at the upcoming FCM um, conference in Calgary in June. So um, any time that I will meet with uh, the Premier and also with the Minister of Government Relations, uh, the Honourable Don McMorris, we will have those conversations also because I, I truly believe they understand the pressure that municipalities are under right now. And we know that we share the residents. Um, you know, our, our uh, residents are also their residents. So uh, we want Saskatchewan to grow. You hear the Premier talk about um, expanding, expanding our exports, um, you know, getting out and getting our products across the world. Well, you know where those products are growing and where they uh, where they actually happen is in our municipalities. So I want to turn back to the governance review for just one last question before I let you go, because I know you are a busy president, you're a busy councillor, and you're a busy all-around person out in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. But you have now transformed what SUMA was to what SUMA will be. Looking forward, say, 10, 15, 20 years from now, do you think SUMA will be set up for the long term with this new structure uh, changes and this new governance change that the members have so overwhelmingly approved for SUMA for 2025? 
will we be set up? Absolutely. Um, but I don't think we rest on our laurels. As I said, we're going to continue reviewing this, um, you know, taking a look at how to improve. But I think, um, you know, Chris, thank you for that question, because overall, it's having those discussions with our members. Um, we're already planning for um, convention 2025. My head is exploding with all the things that we're going to do. It's our 100th anniversary. Um, and, you know, the future is very bright for our municipalities. Do we have challenges? Absolutely. But, you know, when my grandparents came here, when they immigrated here uh, from Ukraine, um, what they saw is still the beautiful province. It just looked a little different. <laughs> and uh, so I'm looking forward to, you know, um, you know, spending the next year continuing to get this process into gear, get it get it working, because what I heard at our convention is we got the we've got the support of our members. Now we just have to work together to make sure that uh, we continue to grow. President Golden, it is always a pleasure to sit down with you and chat. It seems like every time I sit down, I am awe, in awe of what's going on in Saskatchewan. So thank you so much for your time and for your ability to come on the show and talk about the governance changes at SUMA. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. And I know that I will be seeing you at the FCM conference. So uh, be safe and let's uh, we'll see you in, in less than a month from now. We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA convention in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs, which you saw today, to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews where we sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of Canada, or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have hopefully come to enjoy over the last few years. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today or scroll down into the show notes and click the Support the Show Now page link today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, but most importantly, and as always, just keep talking.